Okay guys, so as I promised you, we're going to video the 24 valve Cummins that came out of this 2005 Dodge. This one here, number 6 cylinder failed on it and broke the rings. Um, okay, this one went to the machine shop, they bored it 20 over, as you can see they put a .020 on each hole. And then you can tell right here that they took 5 thousandths off the deck. And here's the head, it's all been redone. By the same machine shop. This would be diesel cast us up in Portland. I had the block in the head back quite a while ago, but it took me some time to get the parts on this thing, aftermarket parts. I just I had a heck of a time. Um, of course, you know what the reason that is. Um, but I had the rods gone through too. They did the small end holes, bushings. And other than that, he said they were in great shape. I didn't send the crank off. Sometimes I'll send the cranks off depending on what they look like. If it looks like anything, got in there and scratched the journal up just a little bit, I'll have them polished. <clears throat> but this one is, uh, was in such good condition that I decided to leave it alone and just clean it up and put it back in with standard bearings. Now I have Christmas tree shit all over my block because <clears throat> me and my wife drug it in here when we got home that night. So I'll have to blow that stuff off. Um, anyhow, um, I ordered I ordered these parts from Ag Kits, uh, which I've bought a lot of kits from them, and then they sent me an email giving me this rebate um, on the parts. They said they couldn't get the gasket kit. So this, the bearings, this box here showed up within like a week of me ordering it. And I was really extremely busy like I always am. So I just thought, well, huh, I hope the rest of it's coming. Well, three weeks later, the pistons showed up. And they're not even Reliance, they're AFA. I looked them up, they seem to be, they have good reviews. So they seem to be a decent product. So I finally got that, but they sent me a like a $300 rebate or refund on my credit card for the gasket kit. They said they could not get a gasket kit for it. So I ended up going through Napa to get the gasket kit for this thing, which is here's the gasket kit for it right here. I'm going to flop this thing over and we're going to... Uh, flop it over put the crankshaft in it oh I gotta do something a little bit different here but I guess you know when you can't get the part it doesn't really somebody can get it for you it really doesn't matter what it costs if you really need it bad enough over clean some of this crap here off she's looking pretty good the machine shop put new cam bearings in it there's only there's only one in these blocks So number one and number seven main caps, we'll have to pop those back off of there. Um, that's your piston cooling nozzles right here. Well, All right, so on these piston cooling nozzles, on these five nines and these six, seven blocks, uh, I know I'm probably going against what I've told you before. 
uh, told you to take them, you know, make sure you put your rods and pistons in and have those out. Well, I'm going to do it the other way on this one. The, the reason is it's, these are a lot easier to see sitting here on the engine stand instead of most of the time you're doing an end frame on a truck and with an ISX Cummins or a CAD engine or something like that, you know, a big 15 or 16 liter engine, usually when you, you know, start shoving that big rod and piston down in there, it doesn't take much with that kind of material and weight to snap a nozzle off. So on this little 5.9, um, one of the reasons is it's so narrow in there, you know, the box so narrow that you can't hardly get your hand. You can, it can be done. I've done it. Uh, I've just found it's easier this way. And if you're just careful with it, when you're putting in, just make that your rod is turned the right way. And these are pretty easy because the pistons all are marked front on them. So you can, you can, once you get the first one in and you get your rod clocked correctly and to where it's going to clear the piston coolant nozzle, they, they, uh, they'll go and then another thing on these when just make sure when you're setting up your rods and pistons that they're orientated right and you'll see that there's a relief cut out in the skirt of the piston that'll line up with your piston cooling nozzle and these piston cooling nozzles if i remember right i might even i don't know i might even tell you later on i don't remember uh, it's been a while since i actually recorded this i'm just now getting around to editing editing this uh but they're torqued down to 133 inch pounds and another thing i try to do especially after you get it back from machine shop take compressed air and through every every oil gallery say where the main bearing saddles are and then the uh, the main galleries it's the machine shop here left the freeze plugs out because they want you to blow it out so just make sure you blow it out really good and then make sure when those guys were doing all that machine work there's not any metal shavings that are in one of those main rifles or uh you know oil passages going to the main bearing saddles that way it doesn't ruin your engine so anyways thought i would explain that to you what i'm doing there okay so we're digging our rod or main bearings out okay torque those piston killing nozzles to 133 inch pounds these are standard, okay. Let's go ahead and roll them in. Get two hands on the situation here. Okay. Come, I don't see. Is there not one here on this four? I don't remember. Okay, it doesn't have the. Couldn't remember. Just bearing. It's gonna be down here. And the thrust bearings are. It's all incorporated into the main bearing shell on these. Make sure it says standard. Hmm. What's going on here? <coughs> there we go. Assembly lube, some lube or plate.
I might go ahead and get my lifters in here too. It's easy to do right now. Alright guys, so on this, on these flat tap at lifters, I kind of screwed up here, I probably, what you really should do, I mean I've gotten away with it before, but if you're going to reuse lifters with the cam, you should keep them in order as they were disassembled on what lobes they were on the cam, and I just got scatterbrain and things set for a while, and they got mis mixed up, but most of the time they're okay um so you should keep those in order so i mean i've i've probably put i don't know how many dozens of engines together without ever doing it but i mean if they wear on a certain lobe it's probably a good thing to keep them in order uh and the other thing on these just really look at the flat tap it surface of so that's where they get pitted or the problem with all this new oil especially now the old Dello 400, the old Dello was good oil, but the new stuff, the LE oil, they took the zinc out of it. And I really recommend the guys that are running Dello LE 1540 to put some zinc additive in their oil. Because that's what's really hard on flat tap at lifters is, is not having the zinc in there anymore. It's, it really kills cams and kills those flat tap at lifters. You know, they don't really wear where the where the lifter wears in the bore, they wear between the cam. They wear on the flat surface of the cam, and they'll wear the lobes on the cam. All right, guys, so thank God for my lovely wife. Uh, I mean, I could have got it. I would have had to back my service truck. My service truck has a big hook on the end. The problem with this cherry picker, it's an awesome cherry picker. I bought this at an auction and fixed the port of power, and it works great now. The problem is, is this hook on the end is not big enough. If you want to put a strap around each journal, it's just not, you can only get about one strap on there, and that's all it'll stay safely on the hook. So it just doesn't work for that. I need a bigger, I got to get a bigger hook, and then this thing would be great. So she came in and brought me a bacon sandwich in for breakfast this morning, and I said, please, can you help me? And we... I put some rags underneath the gear here and she got her hands underneath it where it didn't hurt her hands and and we lifted it up and sat it down in there and it went in there just slick as can be so anyways yeah so now i'm going to eat my bacon sandwich and then we're going to get the main caps and clean them up put the bearings in them and we'll put all the mains in it and torque them down and i know people are going to say are you plastic aging we're not we're not plastic aging uh, if I've had a crank ground or something like that or had low oil pressure problems you know there, there none of those conditions existed uh, yeah I meticulously go over the main bearings and rod bearings and plastic gauge everything uh, we didn't have any crankshaft work done none of that stuff was done nothing was done to the main bore on the block so you know to me there's just no reason to waste of time and and uh and plastic gauge every bearing because there was nothing wrong with it so i mean yeah i mean you could possibly run into a situation where some chinaman there didn't pay attention that day i guess and didn't get the block or the bearing uh right on it but i mean uh, it's very unlikely so anyway I will keep on going here, we'll eat our sandwich, and then we'll get our main caps cleaned up, get them installed, and get them torqued. Alright, so, main caps are all torqued down. 
start in the middle work your way out first step is 37 foot pounds and then second step is 59 foot pounds third step is 90 degrees and each step uh, I like to go through and just just make sure to turn freely real easily by hand Let's see if you can see that And it should turn really easily. You shouldn't have any problems turning that. So you really got to make sure that those dowels get seated in there before you just don't take an impact and just cinch them down because if you get the dowel off, it'll damage it. So you want to get that main bearing cap, get that dowel recessed and seated in there first before you start reefing her down. So now what I'm going to do actually, guys, I'm going to put the front cover on, the inner cover, that way I can put my cam in and time it to my crank. And then, then when I flop the block over to put my rods and pistons in, my lifters won't fall out. It looks like we're just about done for the day. That's the second piston box that I opened and oil control rings are broke from the shipping company. Second bottom compression rings broke. Let's go get another box and see how many sets are broke. Looks like we're just about done for the day. got here kind of sucks I was really hoping to like get the head on it and all that kind of stuff and move right along with this thing so far that's not happening I'll just show you how I've been opening the packages ever so gently and they just fall apart we might have got one set that has not broke, no broken rings. Okay. Wow. Okay. It was all the boxes on top where they put the package up and slammed it down. That's that's what happened. I guess I can do a few things. I can get like four of the. I got two sets of rings that I need so far. We haven't opened this one up yet. I should have had those other ones on videotape. But opened them up and they were just fell out in pieces. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and. Uh, I'll call them. I need. I need. I need two oil control rings and one compression ring. Bottom compression ring. Okay. Well, I can at least get the rest. Well, I can get a few more set up here. All right, guys. So it's been a been about a week since I last videoed on this. I ordered. They warrantied the, uh, they replaced basically the, the sets of rings that they broke and then the other thing I, I told them that I, I forgot to order rod bolts so I actually rolled it over on the engine stand and put new rod bolts in it. I like to replace rod bolts. So I put the, what is it, the three or four pistons in there, set them up that would, I didn't have in there previously and uh, of course I got the head on it. Um, uh, torque on the head is, uh, 66 foot pounds, start in the middle, go side to side till you get to the outside, 
and then you go all over it all over again at 66 foot pounds second sequence and the third sequence is 90 degrees and the rod bolts are torqued at 44 foot pounds plus 60 degrees so anyway you're probably wondering why it's sitting on the floor well <laughs> i got to looking and these ears were bending and the bolts were bending holding it up so i thought well you know i'm not liking that too much so she's she's sitting on the floor now so me and my wife we had some things to go do we had a six seven cummins that we had to go finish the exhaust manifold job well i'd finished it saturday but today's sunday i, I finished it saturday and uh i knew the owners were coming back today so i didn't have any of that orange antifreeze so i we, t we ran it back down to the main shop and then took the vacuum puller we just jumped in our pickup you know and went down there and we just pulled the vacuum on it put new antifreeze in it and i went out and test drove it and made sure everything was okay so they're going to pick it up on their way home from reno tonight they were over there at the cattlemen's association's dinner so anyway uh got back and i thought you know i told her i said i forgot to grab the shop back so anyway she said let's just go buy one well my buddy chris as i was on the way over there says you got to get one of them milwaukee shop backs and i'll tell you what he's right that son of a gun it was a little more money than i wanted to spend for a shop back but uh it's pretty cool battery operated shop back and i'll tell you what this is this is something that's nice to pack around in the service truck right here i am going to pack this with me now i don't know where in there but I need to find like a job box and put in the back of the truck there up against the hydraulic tank and start stacking stuff like this in there. But this one sucks and blows. It's got a sucker here and obviously, obviously a bowling port here. You can blow stuff off and it's got two speeds. It's one speed. There's off. There's two speeds. And then uh, let me put this back over here. You pop her up, and there's the battery right there. I bought a new battery. This this one here I pulled out of my uh, I pulled out of my impact wrench, but I bought a I bought a M18 battery, but it's a eight what do they call that? Eight milliamp or whatever the hell it eight hour or I don't know what the hell they call it. It's a XC 8.0 is what it is. So I like this. This is going to be handier than hell packing this on the truck and then doing things. Anyway, that all being said, what I did is I came back and my heater, about twice a year when you're using this thing, it gets a lot of soot built up inside here on this waste oil heater. And what happens is you'll, there's a, a there's a burn tray right there. You start start that's what you start it with you pour oil and a little diesel fuel in there and you take your propane torch and light it and then once the temperature gets high enough in there from that burning the vapor pan burning the you know the temperature switch will kick on the fan and then uh eventually it'll start turning this little cam on this pump it's a real simple thing but the key to this heater here is uh, i'm going to tell you something I, I, when i had this heater begin with i had nothing but problems with it and i was about ready to just take this piece of shit and throw it in the scrap iron pile but one of the things that i did that helped this thing tremendously you flip this little lid up this plate comes off here there's a there's a tube right here that pump pumps that oil up through this copper tube right here and this this is a steel tube here up inside and then it there, it sits on a piece of little angle iron it's going straight right over the middle of the it goes right over the middle of that vapor pan and goes down there and hits it and hits this peg on this vapor pan you can't hardly see it there's a peg there and that's what and then it burns you know so uh the problem i was having was the flame the carbon that steel tube going in there 
it was constantly plugging that tube up. And then what would happen is this little cam, it would, it eat, it would pop this little out because the pump would get basically a helicopter or something flying over the house. Anyway, it would build up too much discharge pressure and the pump wouldn't turn. So, I mean, I fought it and I fought it for shoot the first year I had it. You know what I did? I finally, there's a, that angle iron has got a hole. It's, it's got a hole right in the end where that tube went in 90 down into it. And I got to looking at it, I said, why can't, why don't we just keep the carbon from coming up straight up through that and plugging that up? I said, I'm just gonna cut the damn 90 degree end off and let it drip right down the hole. And that's what I did. And I hardly ever have any problems with it now. That's the way, I never have any trouble with it now. You know, I, it gets dirty and all that soot gets built up in there and that carbon from burning oil that it gets insulated in there to where it doesn't become very efficient anymore and it just doesn't put the heat out like it should so i just so what i did today i went and sucked about two gallons of soot out of it so anyway that being said the heater's running now i'm gonna get the chain off this thing i'm gonna start putting push rods in it i'm thinking about actually lifting this up and sitting it on something a little higher so we're not bent over all the time trying to work on it I'm trying to think what i can do here uh hmm. i'm gonna figure something out set it up a little higher so i'm not bending over all the time uh, we got the push tubes in it got five of the six injectors in it so of course uh on these this is a common rail engine so Make sure the make sure the open the port where the uh, feed tube comes through the head. Make sure it's facing the right direction. If you can get them 180 degrees out, and then you try to put the feed, feed tube in there, and it ain't gonna work very good. But you know, put a new O-ring on a new copper, or reusing injectors. Cause that's what I was told. Just you just gotta make sure if you're doing that, put it on the warranty paperwork for the engine say you know if you have an injector fill it takes out a piston it's on you not me make them sign it this guy here i'm not worried about you knowing this guy he's a he's a good dude not worried about him uh now i don't think i've ever seen a 24 valve injector tip it's really uncommon the thing that happens with these 24 valve Cummins injectors is they, they start leaking too much to return. They have hard start problems and they'll throw check engine lights when you're pulling a heel or something like that. Uh, not very often do they like blow tips off to where they fail. So before you don't tighten those down, just pop them in there for now. Then you got to put your feed tubes on there. So let's peel all the O-rings off this feed tube. We've got new O-rings for those. Oh, shit. That didn't work out so good, did it? I'm trying to get underneath that sucker with the pick. Tight little son again. I used to work on this guy's log truck when I was younger. He's dead now, but I'd be pulling on something. The bolt or something, you know, trying to get it loose. and. I remember I was doing load sales on his on his bunk. So was, a lot of guys have electronic load sales underneath the bunks on their trucks and the trailer. And I was putting new sales on it because they, you know, a lot of these guys are out in the woods somewhere and they they try to get halfway legal before they get to a scale, so they're not way off when they're loading logs, you know. And a lot of the old guys had air scales, but uh, anyway, I was. Those, those load cells on those bunks are like a thousand foot pounds and I was trying to get it loose and I had a one inch gun on it and I was heating and I couldn't get it loose and every time I'd say man this thing's tight and he'd go oh never found a loose one that's kind of smart ass he was never found a loose one he'd always say some of you will get it some of you won't
And you're asking me, I usually wear them gloves, but we, we can't. We ordered two boxes of them and having trouble getting them. Say they're, they're saying the eight. I probably should have stopped at AutoZone or Napa or see, seen if they had some. I'm trying to find them motor rings now. Here they are. Take care of your mother. feed tube nuts I'll go through this torque sequence. Uh, it's kind of critical on these, I think. The, the thing is, what you do is you run these down evenly. These bolts on your injector hold downs. Try to get them even as much as you can. And then uh, what you do is you'll do an initial torque on... You'll do an initial torque on the injector hold down and then you'll back them off if I remember right. Like one flat or something like that. And then you'll do an initial torque on the feed tube nut. What you're trying to do there, the whole purpose of that is, you're trying to get that feed tube centered in the hole there correctly.
because if you just go ahead and sense this down all the way and it can't move and then you shove that feed tube in there and tighten it down and it's not in there square it doesn't move that so you're trying to move that injector nozzle in there to get that feed tube centered in there right So yeah, let me go get the torque wrench, because uh, I don't remember. Uh, memory's gone to shit. I used to memorize every torque spec, and I can't hardly... I can remember the main torque specs, like rods and mains, stuff like that. If I've done enough of them, but I don't, I don't remember the injector hold-down torques. So, I was looking at the service manual there, and... I don't know. I remember doing the procedure I just previously talked to you about, about torquing. There's an initial torque and you back it off on the injector and then you put the feed tube in and the feed tube nut on and then there's an initial torque on the feed tube nut to center the feed tube into the injector and then you go back to the final torque on the um, injector and then do the final torque on the feed tube. The other thing on this you want to make sure you're doing while you're doing this is you want to make sure that um, that just I look at the gap on each side of the hold down there between the hold down and the head and just that's what I'm doing here. I'm trying to get my gap even there the way my clamp is putting an even force on each side of the injector and then uh, so what I did there is I I torqued the injector down to 89 inch pounds and then I backed them off till they were loose and then snugged them by finger and then I tightened up the injector feed tube to 10 foot pounds and then I went back and did the final torque to 89 inch pounds on the uh, on the injector and what I did is I started on one side and did a quarter turn and then went back to the other side and did a quarter turn and just kept going back and forth till one side clicked and checked the other side too but usually if the one side clicks the other side the way that thing pivots on that fulcrum it's gonna it's gonna the other side's gonna be at 89 inch pounds too so once you get all those in and torque down on the final torsion injectors then go back over all the feed tubes at 44 foot pounds. All right, so the valve on it. Okay, valve bridges or crossheads, whatever you want to call them. Service manual. There's an ob. It's like every other valve bridge. There's an oblong hole and a round hole. Some service manuals on different ends I've read want you to face the oblong hole a certain direction. This actual service manual here tells you that if you're reusing them, put them back in their original location. Well, it doesn't really matter for what we're doing because all the valves are new, and the, you know, so the valve stems are new. So it didn't really matter. I just put, these have a little dot on them right here. I just put all the oblong holes facing that way. But it says if you're putting brand new ones on there, it says it doesn't matter. So, um, what else? Rocker pedestals, 27 foot pounds torque pulled down. The, the, the rockers got a little pedestal, and there's little oil channels in the bottom of that pedestal. There's oil feed holes in the bottom of the head here that feeds the pedestals. You can't really get that wrong either because the pedestal is shaped a certain way to go around the valves and the injector and stuff. So if you get it wrong, it's your rockers are never going to bolt up and your and your you know where your rocker tips are will never hit the valve bridges pretty self-explanatory 10 thousands 20 thousands i'm going to start off with uh 10 thousands on okay the short rockers are your intakes the long rockers are your exhaust so we'll start off on uh intake
course there's going to be one, three, and five exhausts. Twenty-four valves are pretty nice, but I still, I'll still take my old twelve valve any day. It's just reliable, you know. I don't know, just simple. Good old twelve valve and that service structure is a good old engine. I'm telling you. My marks are lined up there on my crank and my cam, so I know I'm dead on on the timing mark. So now what I'm going to do is just rotate it to where my timing mark for my uh, crank back point straight up. Pretty simple. Yes, you got compression now. Good compression.
Okay. Now we should be in valve overlap here. They should be tight. Which they are. So now we just run the valves on the rest of them. Remember the short ones are the short rockers or the intakes and the long ones. You can start over here and number number six and do the intakes on number six. the exhaust. So we've done with all the intakes. Now we'll do the exhaust. done 
kind of kind of go over them and just look at just look at uh what i like to do is just look at the amount i'll look at all my intakes and look at the amount of thread sticking above the nut just to make sure they all kind of look the same sometimes you got to get down kind of on the same plane as them and look at them i mean i've gone as far as to count them before you know that th what that'll tell you is if you if you didn't get a push rod seated up in a lifter bore right or something like that or one of these rockers isn't quite seated right or something like that or you're out of way out of sequence or some damn thing see all the intakes are pretty much looking the same and the exhausts are all looking the same as well so she pretty should be pretty well ready to go uh, let's just see if she'll turn over now. Make sure she goes another revolution. Definitely got compression. I could just sing that thing over before. It's amazing that it even ran. I think the only thing they ran when these things get really low compression it's because of such high fuel pressure you know on the common rail system yeah she's ready to go there so i'm going to get the wiring harness now and get all that stuff on there well i'm going to get up early in the morning and keep rolling on this thing at a Get the valve cover here. Got the rocker box wiring on these wires. There's a torque spec on them. I don't usually torque them. I'm just common sense. I just snug them down. You don't have to stand on them. I mean, they're just little bitty studs. Guys break them off all the time. Um, I mean, if you're unsure of your own strength, I guess get the torque wrench out. But uh, the rocker box and the wires are on it. Had to clean the valve cover up, stick it on there. And then once that's on, uh, we'll I think we'll put the intake manifold on with the grid heater assembly, and then of course the wiring. Well, we'll put all the fuel lines onto the feed tubes coming off the common rail. After we put the intake manifold, we we'll have to bolt the common rail back on, and then uh, put the put the lines on. Let's we'll put the common rail pump in, wiring harness, all that stuff. I uh, got my rear seal installer. That'll be on the next video for this engine. Here's the rear seal installer for this engine. Um, so I'm going to get up at like 4 in the morning and come out here and keep going on this thing. Try to get this thing done. Uh, i got to get some black spray paint too. And uh, paint this thing. I ought to paint this thing red, you know, like a Cummins in a truck. I don't really get them high. I'll probably paint it black. Like it was. So, anyway. Uh, we're moving along on her. So, anyways, I'll be back with you guys on the next video. And uh, we'll just continue the reassembly.